Hi friends, welcome back to All in Law. This is a quick OBGYN, and today I'm going to talk about postpartum fever. Very important for ESMLA and for medical students. So, guys, remember postpartum day we have total for a month. So, we're gonna tell you what happens and what is the diagnosis if the patient complains on a day one to day 21. Okay, postpartum day zero means on the same day of the delivery. So, the patient's complaints of uh, what you call a mild fever with uh, rails on auscultation and the patient is unable to take a deep breath. So what's the diagnosis? It's nothing but atelectasis. Okay. Why, what is the cause for atelectasis on a day one? Because of a general anesthesia. Usually for a cesarean or normal delivery, we don't require any anesthesia. For a uh, cesarean, spinal anesthesia is given. And if the complication occurs, then they give the general anesthesia or any other condition that requires a general anesthesia in the patient with incisional pain. And uh, these patients can have this what you call atelectasis on the same day. And if the patient is a cigarette smoking, then the patient can develop this atelectasis on that same day. What's the management? Management is nothing but just an exercise, pulmonary exercises like deep breaths, incentive spirometry can be done. Okay, ambulation very important, and chest x rays are not required. Remember, okay. So day zero is atelectasis. Day O is atelectasis. Okay, day one to two. If the patient complains of high fever, costal vertebral flank tenderness, positive urine analysis, what's the diagnosis? It's nothing but UTI. Okay, urine tract infection. So, what are the risk factors? Is multiple interpartum catheterization and vaginal examinations during the process prolonged labor because of the prolonged labor repeated vaginal examination can cause uh, urinary tract infection. So these patients will develop high fever, costal vertebral flank tenderness, positive urine analysis, example like WBC bacteria, okay, and urine culture can be positive. So what's the treatment? Treatment is a single agent IV, that's an intravenous antibiotic, okay, single agent, right. If on a day two to day three, okay, if the complaints of moderate to high fever with uh, uterine tenderness, okay, and uh, peritoneal signs and decreased peristalsis, and uh, the, if the peristalsis is completely absent also, so what's the diagnosis? It's nothing but endometritis. Look at the timing, remember the timing days. This is really very important for USMLE. Okay, it's a moderate to high fever with exquisite what you call uterine tenderness. Okay, peritoneal signs and decreased peritosis should be absent. Remember, and what are the risk factors for this? Is emergency cesarean section after what you call exquisite um, prolonged membrane rupture and a prolonged labor. Okay, so how do you treat it? The multiple agent intravenous. Uh, antibiotics like uh, we have a clindamycin, gentamicin, okay, right? Next, move on to the day four to five. So, this patient complains on a day four or five that persistent spiking fever despite antibiotics along with the wound erythema fluctuation or a drainage. So, what's the diagnosis? Is a wound infection, right? Wound infection. So, what's the risk factors? Is emergency CS, that's a cesarean section, CSAC, after prolonged membrane rupture and prolonged labor. Okay. How do you treat it? Intravenous uh, antibiotics for cellulitis. Drainage can be what you call wound drainage is done twice a daily. Okay. So, these are really very important steps. Let's move on to the day five and the day six. And the patient complains of persistent white fever, swings, despite broad spectrum antibiotics with a normal pelvic and a physical examination. So it's nothing but on a day five and a six, it's a septic thrombophlebitis. Septic thrombophlebitis. 
Okay, guys. So, what's the risk factors? Emergency is a section of a prolonged rupture of membranes and the prolonged labor. How do you treat it? Intravenous heparin, heparin, intravenous heparin for 7 to 10 days, keeping PTT at 1.5 to 2 times a baseline. Okay, right? On a day 7 to 21, almost a month, 3 weeks. So now the patient complains of fear of variable degree with localized unilateral breast tenderness, erythema and edema. Nothing but infectious mastitis. What are the risk factors? Lactational nipple trauma leading to nipple cracking and this allows the what you call bacteria known as staph, Staphylococcus aureus okay, to accumulate and cause in the infection in the ducts and the lobes of the breast. So how do you treat it? It's nothing but oral cloxacillin. Breastfeeding can be continued. Remember, breastfeeding is really very important at this stage. You should not stop the breastfeeding unless there is a person in the breast. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to have a pneumonia, uh, I don't know whether it's good or not. At you and wound. At you and wound. Say I. That's the atelectasis, unitact infection, endometritis, wound infection, say septic thrombophobitis, and I is infectious mastitis. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.